Well, the fan has done its joyful work, and now our top is good, set, and as dry as needs be, so it's time to do the bottom. To do that, give her a flip, and you're good. I am fortunate enough with this pumpkin to have a relatively flat top, so my pumpkin rests pretty darn well in its inverted state. If you have a pumpkin that has a roly-poly top, and it will not stay up, then you grab something I know I mentioned in the materials section. I forgot it completely. A cheap dollar store bucket. And this will stop your project from rolling around should you be unfortunate enough to have that happen. Almost any container will do, so long as it's got a nice round lip on it. And it should stop your project from going all over the everywhere. Boom. All right. The more astute of you who have already done this may also have noticed that you have some fairly open, edgy areas here. These go right in. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it in the least. The only thing you do need to concern yourself with these edges is one, if you feel like it, you can tear off little pieces. I personally don't care. Uh, but you should probably just start by moistening them up with a little bit of your fluid to begin with. That way they will bend in and have just a little bit of give to them as you go. So, without further ado, we will begin the time-consuming process of layering the bottom. Yeehaw. I'm just going to start by actually going around the beginning and moistening up the entirety of this joining section. That by, by the time I actually get to it, these bits will fold in and be very pliant. When they need to be bent around. You will see the fruits of your labors in flaky little bits that have dribbled down. It's a given. The other perk in moistening the bottom section is that when you start to really overlap these, you'll have some area where it's able to pre-stick. So this liquid will seep in there and begin generating the pliancy. It'll be very handy for us later on. I'm also going to make myself a little mark so I know when I've gone around this thing any given time. So when I pass that, that's one complete circuit. Here hopefully you can see how these are bending right in sticking out anymore because they've been moistened up they're just folding right on in fantastic now this pumpkin at least the bottom section here whereas on the top you saw me adding sections from time to time this bottom section here shouldn't need it. All these strips are layering right up to the top, so I should not need to add any kind of extra dabs here and there. This is perfect.
Okay, we are done. That's at least five, probably six layers by my little spin counter here. And now there's nothing left for right now than to throw the fan on this thing, let it dry, and then we can finally start the fun part. All right, you've been patient. You've taken the time to put all these layers on this damn thing. And now it is finally time to have some serious fun. It's time to plan out your face and then begin the awesome spot with the paper clay and the sculpting and the molding, everything that doesn't suck. All right, so the first thing you want to do is find your perfect carving face, just like with a real pumpkin. You want to go through and find that spot where it's going to shine up and be beautiful. If I tried to, hey, be careful of leaving your, what you think is dry pumpkin, on a spot where there might be some moisture, because apparently condensation has done a bit of vile work here and moistened my bottom a little bit. I'm not too worried, but uh, if you get your pumpkin done and you think it's dry, uh, try to leave it in one of those nice little bucket contraptions, so as little as possible is on the bottom. Uh, okay, back to the normal fun part. Yeah. So, try to find your perfect carving face. If I throw a face on this part here, it's going to be all downward sloped and awful. I'm going to try to find a spot that kind of looks up a little bit. Like... Nah. But play with your own pumpkin. Have some fun. And then, make your face. Uh, I'm not trying to get too crazy with this one. That's why I made this thing. This is the one I'm going to get crazy with. Fancy design. All right, face time. Try starting your designs in pencil, and from there you can erase any mistakes that you don't like. Once you've got it pretty well situated to what you think you like, go ahead and grab a marker and outline it finely so you can really see exactly what face is going to be there and how it's going to line up. Alright, I'm going to go for a slightly scully motif on this one. I have done a gazillion pumpkins already that have very standard faces, and I want to try to alter this up a little bit. But have some fun and play with your designs. This is no different from carving a regular pumpkin on Halloween. Or have a great time. Be aware that just like a regular pumpkin on Halloween, once you, the face is cut out, you're going to have a few weak spots, and they're usually classically that spot between the eyes and the mouth. So this little bridge right here will be a slightly weaker area than normal. So plan for it like you would a real pumpkin. And if you have to, you can always reinforce that with some wire or anything else. But just be aware of it. Once you've got your face cut out, it's time to grab an X-Acto and get to the carbon. If you have a Dremel with a cutting bit on it, you can also use that to carve out your face. But also with that, be aware that it's sometimes easy for the Dremel to get away from you and, and drop things. Otherwise, slice up your face in ways that you don't intend, both <laughs> safety-wise and pumpkin-wise. But be careful of this if you go with a Dremel. I use a Dremel for the bottoms because they're always a pain in the butt to get through. But otherwise, just grab your X-Acto and you should be able to punch right through. Oh yeah, cutting tools sharp. Be careful. This has been your safety advisory for the day. And out come your pieces. If you've got small little bits, just like with a real pumpkin, it's advisable to do those first. If when you are cutting, you notice that your pumpkin layer is wobbling in and out a lot, you probably didn't layer enough. So be on the lookout for that particular sign. 
your blade goes in and the whole thing caves in, too thin. More layers. Stop, throw them on, and get it redone. And your face is deployed, whatever the hell it happens to be. At this point, you do not want to pull the stuffing out, but it's sometimes good, just for working's sake, to push it back in from any area that you're going to be manipulating. So, give your stuffing a push back away from the cuts. It's very common to have little paper bits and stuff flying all over the place in this stage. Be aware of that for cleanup purposes. The hard work, well, the fun work, is starting to be done. Now we are going to mix up some paper clay and begin making this thing into the rock solid cool outdoor pumpkin that it's going to be.